and gentlemen, good evening and welcome. It seems strange for a, an Englishman to be welcoming people to America, and I'm <laughs> delighted to be here nevertheless, and uh, delighted particularly to welcome you to this exciting and timely event. For those of you who don't know, it's actually the 10th anniversary of the foundation of the Business and Human Rights Resource Centre, and we're very much celebrating that this year, and this is part of that celebration. My name's Chris Marsden, and I have the honour to be the chair of the board of, of the Resource Centre, and um, uh, consequently, I've got the job to um, start off the evening. Now, we've got a very tight programme, and um, uh, in order to try and make sure that we get through that, uh, I'm sort of in charge for the first part, and uh, uh, the second part, when it comes to um, following the, our main speakers, we then have an interactive discussion and question session, and um, uh, that's going to be uh, uh, taken over by, um, uh, why, why is my, my, my mind's, <laughs> Myla, <laughs> Myla Rosenthal, um, who's going to be looking after that session for us, uh, and uh, but we've also got uh, Patty Surak, uh, who's sitting here, who's actually organised this event and for whom we are enormously grateful for all the hard work that's been done in that, um, is going to be putting up a sort of one-minute sign to go when the various speakers have had their time, so that hopefully we will get through the evening uh, by uh, more or less um, 8 o'clock uh, when you will be invited to a reception next door. Now, just to get things going and just to, to set a bit of perspective, we're very pleased that at last we now have got two researchers in the Middle East and North Africa region. This is the first time we've been able to do that. And what a challenge they face. I mean, it's a region of huge interest to all of us. It's a region of change. It's a region of immense hope, but also huge fear, I suppose. And certainly, it's a region of uncertainty. Nobody knows what's going to happen. Uh, either to the region as a whole or to the individual countries within it. But what we do know is that whatever happens, companies are going to be doing business there. And those companies are going to face huge human rights issues. Now, fortunately, those challenges that they're faced are now a little bit easier to manage than they were because we have an element of clarity in what's expected of them. Many of you here will know of the work of John Ruggie, the United Nations Special Representative uh, on uh, Business and Human Rights. And he managed to persuade the Human Rights Council, uh, some, 50, some nearly 50 countries, uh, several of whom were from the Middle East and Northern Africa, uh, to, ex to adopt the three pillars uh, that he presented and the guiding principles to support them. Just for those of you who don't know, the three principles were that it is government's responsibility to protect human rights. But that includes making sure that companies do their bit to make sure that they're not abusing human rights themselves. But he was also very clear that it's companies' responsibility to respect human rights. And by respecting human rights, he meant to be clear about their policy and to be also um, uh, very clear about how they go about carrying that out with due diligence, with human rights impact assessment, uh, and so on. And the third pillar uh, was that it's governments and companies' uh, responsibility to provide access to remedies for those who inevitably fall foul of one system or another and need to seek redress for human rights abuses that they've suffered. So in this very challenging situation, it is the uh, Business and Human Rights Resource Centre's job to provide a window on what companies are doing uh, in the region through its reports about both the concerns and the opportunities and the initiatives that are taking place and getting company responses to those concerns expressed. We've had terrific feedback from NGOs in many parts of the world about the fact that when a, a report gets onto the website and the resource centre asks the company to respond and the response rate really is very, very impressive, about 75%. Mm -hmm. 
And when those companies then respond, it actually enables the NGO, it raises the profile for the NGO, it actually enables dialogue to take place, and things then begin to happen, which is a terrific tribute to the work of the Resource Centre. And the, although it's a ter wonderful team that's doing that work, it's been led for the last 10 years by the indefatigable and truly magnificent Chris Avery, uh, who's now going to address you. So, Chris, over to you. Thank you, Chris. Uh, our nonprofit organization is uh, pleased to host this event. For those of you unfamiliar with our work, I can sum it up in, in three points. Number one is we disseminate to a global audience information about the human rights impacts, positive and negative, of over 5,100 companies. Number two, we seek responses from companies when concerns are raised by civil society and we draw attention to each company's response or failure to respond. And as Chris Marsden mentioned, in many cases, this process has led to real positive change on the ground. And number three, we provide tools and resources that human rights defenders, companies, and others need in their work. Our aim is, in doing all this is to encourage companies to respect human rights and avoid harm to people. We are committed to being fair in our approach but we're also very persistent. If I could pick three terms to describe our work, they would be impartiality, transparency, and public accountability. Finally, I want to say that our website and weekly updates are, um, are there to serve you. So whether you're uh, a human rights or environmental advocate, or you're a company representative, a government representative, or you're from another sector, uh, we hope that you will use our website, sign up for our free weekly updates, and if you produce or come across information about uh, business and human rights, please, please send it to us so that we can draw global attention to it. In closing, a few words about this event. Um, when we launched this speaker series in 2010, we did so as a tribute to Mary Robinson. During her tenure as United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights, Murray was a pioneer in putting business and human rights on the agenda, and she has been instrumental in moving the business and human rights debate forward ever since then. Murray wanted to ensure, and we wanted to ensure, that this annual event was something special, with speakers who are making a real difference in people's lives through their human rights work. Tonight, we are privileged to have speakers who are doing just that. As Mary has been a business and human rights pioneer at the global level, each of our four speakers tonight is a business and human rights pioneer in the Middle East and North Africa. Uh, over to my colleague, Greg. I'm Greg Rigagnol, Research Director. We're very pleased that we now have researchers on the ground in every region of the world. You can see on the slides where each of these researchers is based. At least I hope so. There we go. Um, Said Al Kilani covers Middle East and North Africa. Lowell Chow covers East Asia. Aliu Diouf covers Francophone Africa. Rania Faza covers Middle East. Eniko Horvath covers uh, Continental Europe. Harpreet Kaur covers South Asia. Joseph Kibugu covers Eastern Africa. And Daniel McMullen covers UK, Ireland, and Israel in the occupied territories. Kanye Mankwabe covers Anglophone Southern and Western Africa. I cover USA and Canada. Amanda Romero Medina covers Latin America. And Ellis Gibenko covers Eastern Europe and Central Asia. And we're now recruiting our first Southeast Asia researcher, who will be based in Bangkok, and our first Asia director, who will be based in Asia. And we'll soon be recruiting a researcher to cover, cover Brazil and Portuguese speaking Africa, who will be based in Brazil. We're pleased that very soon our staff in the Global South will outnumber our staff in the Global North. Stand up. 